what up everybody and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz and I talk about blades and today a mishmash of content. Uh, we're going to do some channel updates, we're going to talk about some knives, talk about some firearms, talk about some other stuff including cold beers and a product that I just want to turn you guys on to that you would be amazed at just how cool it is and it's just, just the stupidest thing. Uh, but I picked it up and enjoyed it so much, I just want to talk about it. Um, let's see. First, let's talk about what I am carrying today. We are going in the ongoing struggle, uh, continuing on with the 4Max Scout. You guys saw my review of this. I uh, know what I'm talking about. If you didn't, there is more than just a review there. There's a situation. And... Um, what the situation was, the back side of the pivot was mission, missing the washer set, uh, the phosphor bronze washer and the little paper thin nylon washer that Cold Steel uses. Uh, totally missing, no washers at all. Uh, I ordered washers aftermarket from USA Knife Maker and set it up myself. Currently, I am running the USA Knife Maker washers front and back, no nylon washer at all. Um, they are a little oversized by about, say, about a sixteenth of an inch on the OD. They're in the six hundred thousandths range. Uh, ID is a quarter of an inch, and I think the thickness was fifteen thousandths or twenty. Th it was between fifteen and twenty thousandths, um, and they work just fine. I, I could probably use the little paper thin nylon washers to fine tune uh, the pivot, but. Um, it's it's pretty much with just a little shake. It's drop shut. The blade's heavy enough to do it, and um, it's smooth. And the lockup's perfect. And uh, the centering is uh, not absolutely perfect, but it's just a couple of thousands off. Uh, for Max Scout, um, guys, tell me what you think about doing some aftermarket scales on this knife. Uh, keep in mind, I paid $79.99 for the knife. A set of aftermarket scales would cost me, uh, depending on cost of material, probably $80 to $90. And I'm thinking like a natural burlap micarta or a Kevlar, something with big fibers in the brown sort of range uh, where the fiber gives the sort of the character of it. That's what I was thinking. It would go well with the heavy stone wash on the uh, blade and the pocket clip. But that's doubling the cost of this knife for a knife that I've already had to order washers for. Um, and it's really, it's nothing special. I don't think it'll ever be a collector's item or anything like that for Max Scout. Um, it's a beast of a knife. You know you got it in your pocket. I'm not going to boohoo it too much, but you know it's there. Um, let's talk about an email that I got. I want to address this because it is so funny when people don't have the time to watch my long videos, but they have the time to send me an email complaining about how long my videos are. Congratulations on that. Uh, please stop to think about what I just said. So I get an email complaining about the length of my videos. I just go on and on and on. What in the hell is wrong with you, Baz on Blades? Are you literally insane and you're just making shit up? We don't even know anymore. The answer is, I don't have a monetized channel where I make money. All of these knives uh, are bought by me for my personal collection. And... Um, I don't make any money off of this channel. I lose money on it. So, I'm doing this because I actually love what I talk about. I have a strong personal interest in knives and firearms and the different things that I'll talk about tonight and in all of my videos. Um, <coughs> how can you have that passion for something and do a 10-minute video? Let me ask you something. Do you want to see a 10-minute video of this knife? How would that do this knife any service at all? That does nothing for that. Um, 
you've got to appreciate what you are doing to do it the way that I do it. And I very much appreciate these things. Anything that I show you on my channel, I am betting my reputation on. And I'm not making a dime off of it. The only thing that I want to make money on is something that I make. Uh, I think it's absolutely insane to get on YouTube and talk about things that other people make and then get paid for it. You're just working for the companies then. Um, even the, you know, the free stuff that has come to me, mostly on the more premium budget arena, you know, less than $100, um, most of that stuff I give away. I, I very seldom keep a piece of that. And I've, I've got a whole box of giveaway stuff over here right next to my table. All the stuff from the canceled uh, Christmas giveaway, I'm going to roll over into a million views giveaway. Uh, so guys, please go back and look through. Don't just subscribe and watch the new videos. Go back all the way to the beginning of Baz on Blades. And just see how bad it was. Just see how bad it was and how that I've grown and we've all grown together in this. Because I have subs in here that have been with me for years now. God bless all of you that you would put up with me for years. I can't find a woman that'll do it. Um, I can't find a woman that'll do it. So uh, why are my videos so long? Because I actually care about the subject matter and I want to talk about it. I'm not talking about it to earn a buck. I'm talking about it because I actually like the shit. Uh, and there you go. So uh, product announcement, not for me, but not product announcement. Product um, uh, call to arms. Uh, product spotlight. I don't know. It's just something I found. It is so simple. It is so badass. Um, let's get the camera up here a little bit. And we're going to talk about this Stein right here. Uh, this is from Walmart. It's the Ozark Mountain branding back there in their camping goods. Uh, they've introduced this vacuum walled sealed uh, stainless product. They were originally clones of like Arctic and, and whatever the other brand was that I never bought. Um, but they've got a beer stein in, it's 20 ounces, and, uh, we're going to drink a cold beer right here, and again, uh, all of you four, five, and six-year-olds, I do not condone you drinking, uh, legal adults over the age of 21, you do what you want to do, do not get in a car, and if you are a violent drunk, fucking stop drinking, it never changes. Fucking stop drinking if you're an angry drunk. I'm tired of hearing about wives beat up by angry drunks. Son of a bitch. And that pause was for the first drink. We are drinking uh, sweet water. They're blue. Uh, it is a blueberry wheat ale. A very easy drinking. Uh, it's going to get you in the $10 range for a six-pack, so it's that step-in premium boutique beer range, uh, the 10 to, say, $14 range. It's a pretty decent beer. I like it a lot. Um, but this Stein, this Stein is awesome. I got one for Dan the Man, and he freaking loved it. We tied one on, and um, good Lord, it was awesome, guys. They These keep the beer cold 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 it's got a comfortable lip at the top uh, they don't sweat uh, you see i've got a rubber band around mine it's because me and dan were drinking we had the same glass uh, i'm gonna find a sticker to put on it but with everything being curves everything being curves on it um, i'm gonna have to watch a sticker uh, size or i'm gonna get some pucker around the edges i've got a round an older magpul sticker this like the burgundy on black. I'm going to try it out. I hope it's not too big. So again at Walmart. Uh, yeah, we're all trapped into shopping at Walmart. I know. But they've got stuff nobody else has got, guys. They've got it at the cheapest price. And, and damn it. 
you got to be able to live life. You just got to do the best that you can. Uh, I highly recommend those. They're like $11.99, $12. Uh, it comes with the plastic lid like all of them do. Screw that shit. It's not a cappuccino. It's a fucking beer. I don't need a lid on it. Uh, not until I've had a few of them at least. So there we go. Talked about the Stein. We're going to do a patina update on the Boker Plus. Can you see the green there? I get a whole bunch of green in that in that patina. Uh, anyway, the Boker Plus um, Quiken. This is a Blade HQ exclusive. Uh, Lucas Burnley designed, of course. Um, this is the finest example of this knife from anybody, including all exclusives that I have handled so far. My particular one feels like it has so much nasty grease in the pivot, it just destroys the feeling. Uh, but I hate IKBS, uh, first gen IKBS. There's no, the bearings are not contained, they're not trapped in a race. Uh, they're sitting in a milled groove on the blade side and the liner or frame side. That sandwiching acts as the race. So these bearings, they're super teeny tiny. You think a T6 screw is teeny tiny? Screw that, okay? These little bearings are teeny tiny, and there's four million of them in there. Um, there's there's enough bearings in there where every man, woman, and child on the face of the planet could have at least you know, one or two, I guess. So um, I never have gotten into it. It feels like to me it's full of a heavy grease and some, maybe some residue from the blade finish, although uh, that's pretty heavily stonewashed. It looks so good. This is the best looking of the Quikens I've seen so far. Copper bolster, copper backspacer, marbled carbon fiber, uh, black hardware on it. They have black stone wash the liners to match the blade finish. Um, the finish of the copper is more with a sheen. It's like a machined satin that's been buffed. Um, and it's it's being very subtle as far as the uh, patina on it. I have not tried to to force any patina. I, I you know it's darkened down sort of look. It it looks okay to me. It looks okay. It's pretty uniform. And in person in the reflection, you're getting some prismatic effect. I'm getting a lot of green, uh, not not much blue or purple, but it just depends on how I handle it. Uh, Quiken, beautiful, beautiful knife. There is the patina update on it. We're going on a couple of years with it, and I doubt it's ever going to do anything more unless I force patina. And uh, I don't like to force patina because you force patina pretty heavy. Um, you get it's either going to wear off in your pocket, in your hands, whatever. It's going to discolor, or you're going to have to seal it with something. And I just I don't want to get into that with this knife. Um, this sort of a gentleman's knife, uh, very slender, very easy to carry. This one with the copper on it, it's pretty heavy. I mean, when you pick it up, you're like, oh, that's substantial. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's not heavy like picking up the Four Max Scout, but come on now. All this copper over, these are heavy steel liners on this thing. And uh, not a lot of weight relieving going on in that Chaz era. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I love the look of the pocket clip on these. It's a little low, and you can see they want to integrate that lanyard hull. Uh, it would have been nice if that would have been like uh, milled, a hole milled through the copper at the, the tip of this, sort of a hidden lanyard hull, and they could bring that pocket clip up as far as they could because I love the look of that pocket clip. I just saw that uh, somebody got an exclusive of this, um, a different uh, accoutrement, but um, I think it was a mini size, one of the mini size, which is like 2.97, uh, three inch blade length. I can't remember what how it was dressed out, um, but it had a deep carry pocket clip on it. So there, good for that. Uh, you know, Bazon Blades loves a deep carry pocket clip if he can get away with it. Patina update on that. Probably the last one. I don't think it's going to do much more unless I force it. We won't spend any more time on it. Uh, the next thing is we're going to do a comparison 
between a couple of crazy fantastic knives out of my collection both have already been featured multiple times uh, we're just going to compare the two of them and uh, one is chinese made from a respected company one is american made from a respective company material wise they're at the same level blade steel wise same level a uh, slightly different build same lock type um we're going to talk about it, and this is not a Chinese versus American thing, but inevitably it's going to end up that way. But I hope presented here in just a slightly different way. Uh, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to talk about our American-made knife here. It is the Zero Tolerance 0452. It has been my favorite knife in my collection since I got my first one. This is the second one I've got. Uh, both were perfectly centered with fantastic action, no lock rock issues or anything. Uh, it's been a very consistent uh, model, as far as I know, from Zero Tolerance. The 0452 is my favorite Zero Tolerance uh, model to date. They have not done anything more appealing to me at any price range. I love this knife. Carbon fiber front, titanium frame lock, S35VN for your blade steel, um, hardened lock uh, insert, deep carry pocket clip, very much on the small side for the size of the knife. I very much like it. I love that pocket clip. I love that pocket clip. You notice I've got a lanyard on it. This is currently the only knife in my collection that has a lanyard, but come on, look at this. Look at... I mean, it just looks so good together. It looks so good together. Uh, the finishes aren't exactly the same, especially on the titanium. The bead looks like it was bead blasted and then tumbled where um, I don't see any bead blasting in the titanium, just the tumbled finish um, on the frame from Zero Tolerance. Love this knife. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, the next knife we're going to bring in, the Chinese knife, is my... Uh, Mass Drop Gavco Thresher, uh, an offering, exclusive offering from what used to be Mass Drop, is now Drop. It is a Michael Gavick design. Uh, hats off to him. I, I just love this knife. I love this design. I love everything about it. Um, these were originally in the $199 to $219 range, so $200 to $220, depending on uh, options chosen. I have the more expensive version here. It includes milling. There was like three or four different patterns of milling available. Uh, three different colors of anodization available on each one of them. There was left-hand models. Um, not as wide a selection, but a good selection for dedicated left-hand frame locks. Um, these are made by Wii knives. So, as far as build, it is typical Wii knives. Uh, $200 plus um, titanium frame lock, S35VN, uh, ceramic bearings on the pivot and detent type of build. It's, it's a Wii product. Uh, it's just Wii's the OEM for Mass Drop and Michael Gavick. So the Thresher, super aggressive, double clipped blade, 100% belly. Look at that tip. Get the F out of here on that tip. It is super duper sharp, guys. Um, very well machined, very well finished, and a grinder satin on, uh, yep. Yeah. Grinder satin, pretty much, guys. It's pretty fine grind and then buffed out a little bit. And uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, markings are subtle. Um, it is not billboarded too much. Uh, although I agree with everybody else that I just, good Lord, is that the ugliest? That's just the ugliest mass drop in all of the mass drop potential in the world. Uh, who, who chose that font? I don't even know. That's so ugly. 
Um, bitching aside about first world issues like that stupidity. Um, I really, really like this knife in my medium large hands. It feels great, but we have some extensive, fairly hard edged scalloping here. And if you don't fall in those scallops, it may not be as comfortable to you. Um, that has nothing to do with the design. They can only do this so many different ways and it is not going to accommodate everybody's hands. It's going to accommodate the biggest majority that they can include. That's going to be the medium large sort of area. Uh, so Bigfoot, um, Bigfoot handed guys, you know, where your daddy was a Bigfoot and your mama was an ugly girl or your your mama was a Bigfoot and your daddy was a buck tooth guy. Um, you know, sort of, if you got those size hands, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, see, I fail. I'm so traumatized for your Bigfoot hands that I failed on that, that thumb opening on that knife. It's got a pretty stout detent in it. Uh, I'm super duper happy with the action. Let's see. Yeah, it's easy to to spidey flick as long as you get on the thumb stud the right way and don't slip off of it because again d10 is pretty good uh on those bearings it's it's you know if there was just a little more weight in the blade it would be totally drop shut smooth again you know all of these standard build stuff uh lock face insert and titanium and all of that jazz so let's do a quick comparison on these guys. And again, it's not a Chinese versus American comparison at all because these knives are equally well made. I do have a massive background in manufacturing, guys. I've worked with tool and die departments. I've worked in steel. Um, I have machined stuff. I've stamped stuff. I have molded plastic. Uh, I have done a bunch in my life. Manufacturing-wise, uh, setup-wise, material-wise, and performance-wise, these knives, regardless of where they were made, are equal. You may or may not like one over the other one because of personal preferences. But there is no difference in the quality of... Uh, whether it be materials or workmanship in these knives, they are perfectly manufactured and butter in the hands. Um, they're just different. They're just different designs from different companies. Um, you know, the $200 versus the $240-ish dollar here. Um, and the zero tolerance, you've got a offset, let's say, uh, differing, differential scale set, let's say differential scale set, let's say that, with carbon fiber on the front, titanium on the back. Um, if you like carbon fiber, you're going to, right there, it's going to win you over because it's got the carbon fiber. Uh, the Thresher being titanium and titanium is not less as good, it's just titanium and titanium. So I don't think there's any sort of wins there. Uh, where somebody might prefer carbon fiber, look at this killer machine and, and the way um, that the way it's scalloped gives you dimensional um, aspect. It it makes the handle more exciting and more interesting. Just the way the light plays off of the curves uh, in these scallops and the way it works with the anodization and the way that the oils in your skin, as you're handling it, affect the anodization color. So it gives it so much character. And then with the satin blade, there you go. Carbon fiber, on the other hand, on this um, sort of, it's sort of plain. It's sort of plain. You don't get any anodization here. Uh, what you get is a fairly fine and not super aggressive stone wash. Um, it's not super aggressive like, let's pull that 4Max Scout back out and look at the stone wash. It is much more aggressive, much more coarse uh, on that knife than we're looking here on this titanium. Of course, two different materials. We're just talking about the stone wash finish of it. 
Um, this is a good, I think, uh, a good mule for anodizing. And you can anodize at home, 9-volt battery anodize. Uh, and you can do two or three different really good colors. You got bronze, blue, and purple. Um, maybe I'll do a video on anodizing, guys. It's so super simple. Anybody could do it. Um, let's see here. Blade Steel S35VN. Both of these companies work S35VN pretty decent. I would say they're both run a point soft. That would put them 5960, where I would prefer them be... 6061 in uh, S35 VN, but you know, 60 is not bad. And I, I don't know how people that are knife collectors dull their knives so fast. I wrote, I have to rotate knives so often. I've got knives I've had for 10 years, they still have the factory edge on them, and they've been carried and used. I just don't carry them for that long. I've got to rotate. I've got all of these this stupid collection of knives that is a very small compared to most. Believe me, it's a very small. Um, I've still got to rotate through all of these knives because I paid for them. I bought them because I like them. I want to carry them. So, another sip of this. Cold beer again. Sweetwater blue, guys. Sweetwater blue and this killer new stein that I got. It's just as cold as when I poured it in there, guys. So, um, let's see. Blade Steel is equal. Both of them work that S35VN pretty well. Uh, we got a difference in the front scale. We got some anodization. We got bearings. <sighs> guys, these knives are fantastic. Uh, it doesn't matter um, that this knife was made in the United States. Let me tell you a little bit about manufacturing. Manufacturing is, has, the quality of manufacturing has very little to do with the place that it is done. And the majority of the quality is in the hands of the people doing it. You have to have a competent crew that can do their jobs and cut down on inconsistencies, uh, faults, and um, non-passing product. Um, you don't want product waste in the manufacturing of it. Once a company reaches a specific level of that, it doesn't matter if it's Chinese made on a piece of equipment or it's American made, made on an equivalent piece of equipment. Um, it's really, it's in the hands of the people. And that sort of segues into my thoughts again on totally boycotting Chinese made product. This is what this is my thoughts on this. And a lot of people do not like this because it's not as black and white as they like to pretend. Um, the Chinese people have never done a thing to you in your life. Uh, the Chinese people are run by a government that has infiltrated every aspect of their life, including business. Businesses are run by the state in China. The Chinese people don't want to come over here and steal every concept that we have. The Chinese people are suppressed. They are beaten down. They're not allowed any, any of the freedoms that we have and take for granted in the United States. I feel so bad for the people in China that I just about, I can't stand it. Fuck their government. Okay? And the business sector that just blindly follows the government and then tries to steal everything, uh, the people in command, fuck them too. Um, and fuck that damn COVID-42. Fuck that shit. I'm tired of wearing a mask. Jeez. Um, but I mean, as far as where it's made, let's, let's think back. China is, I, I may be off a few hundred years here, but I believe China has been working with steel, not iron. They had already working with steel for 1400 to 1500 years. Um, the United States 
That is four times, let's see, 1,500 years, 400. Uh, that's almost four times as long as this country has existed as an independent and sovereign country. So, um, you know, before we get all uppity, I mean, those guys were working with steel. Now, were they once basically a third world country and way behind the curve on tech? Uh, tech? Yes, they were, but now they're world leading in tech. They can do, they can machine a piece of titanium just as good as any American can. Okay, now this is coming from a guy that has not only worked in manufacturing, connected to machining, precision machining. Um, I have an extensive background in this knife world, including owning multiple very expensive custom-made knives, okay? And I mean all the way from everything hand-ground to some that were water jet profiled and then hand-ground, what you might consider mid-techs. Um, I've never broke the $750 mark for a knife and probably never will, but I have spent $750 on a knife more than once. <laughs> more than one knife. So, uh... That's never going to happen again. It's just not going to happen again. Um, but, I, you know, I, I know the difference between quality, guys, is what I'm trying to say. And I'm not saying that I'm any better or any different than anybody. I just have a different background and a different appreciation for these things. Um, those knives are equal regardless of where they come from. People got to eat, okay? People got to eat. Um, bottom line, as far as I'm concerned, buy American whenever you can. If you don't have the option, stop feeling guilty about it. If you don't have the option uh, because of product availability or price or anything like that, don't feel guilty about that and stop listening to these people that want to say that they own everything American. They're fucking liars. Everybody that is ever commented on any of my videos anti-chinese is doing it on a chinese made device wearing chinese made clothes sitting in a chinese made computer desk using a chinese made whatever to go through a chinese made whatever and the chinese made whatever i'm just tired of it i'm tired of that crap and it's not the I don't dislike the people that come in here saying that. I totally get it. But Jesus, you can't do it. You cannot do it. I don't care who you are. You cannot buy 100% American if you are a working class person. You just can't do it. Do I want to buy American? Hell yes. I've got to look these people in the face. Okay, I live with them in America. I want to support these people. But you just can all the time. Quit bitching about that too. Good God. <sighs> so there you go. I'm going to close this out. This one's extra super duper long for those guys that like to complain about it. Congratulations to you. It gives you something to talk about. I hope your mom and dad are proud of you. As always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch one of my videos. God bless all of you. And we will talk to you again.